here in the Business Insurance Zone with me, Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and contributing author to Backroom Technician. This week on The Biz, the Insurance Company Financial Review, and on today's show, the Blue Book Balance Sheet Items with special co-host, certified financial planner and CPA, Ken Davis. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Well, welcome everyone to the Business Insurance Zone. We're broadcasting right here live to a nationwide audience of financial advisors right here in Fountain Hills, Arizona, and I, your humble host, Steve Savant, with my co-host this week and all this and all the days this week, we're going to be with us, Ken Davis. Stephen, good to see you. Good to see you. And of course, as you've seen, if you did not see our show, you probably don't know that Ken is a CLU, CHFC, CFP, and CPA. And I highly recommend that you go back out to the show that we did on ratings yesterday because it was really in really a great, great show. I'm not saying that because we're involved so much that the information that we're pulling off Vital Signs and Ebix Company who is sponsoring our whole this week because we're talking about their product, which I've been using for over 20 years. I mean, this is golden. Today, we're talking about some basic balance sheet items. Now, Ken, a lot of our agents are saying, hey, you know, Steve, I'm kind of, I need to kind of come up my game. I can't just do ratings. I can't just look at the, you know, the, the Comdex report, that numerical number, maybe not be as due diligence as I need to go. What about the filing? Now, Everybody has to file in their state. Right. Some people call it the blue book. And by the way, how big is it, Ken? It is, it's like, it's really well, tall. Well, probably it, that way this day. It used yeah, to be about like that. that. And on page 29, A and B are the bad boy, <laughs> good or bad boy issues of the company. Mm -hmm. And you can spend your 75 to a dollar, whatever it is, to each page to print that out if you want to buy the whole blue book. What is it, I mean, what did you buy when you Well, it was, God, that was 20 years ago. Oh. It was 15 bucks. It's, it's probably, probably 50, 50 bucks now. They all have to file and they call it you familiar? I don't know why this is. They call the filing the convention blank. Somehow, <laughs> somehow, you know, I'm just thinking. I'm, I have a financial document that's called the convention blank. The blue book's called. That's their official name. And I'm, the first time I heard that, I'm like, I think the guy was pulling my leg. <laughs> when I used to do this, I got into in the old days. Remember, Ken, the Townsend and Ship report out in New York. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Before we had heavy duties things coming off of vital signs. We used to do the combination of vital signs on these reports, the summary of the convention blank, and we were doing Townsend and Ship report, and we were on top of it. I mean, those were the days when you had to be on top of it. We had major carriers having problems. And so now we wanna walk you through some of these issues. And before I do, I wanna talk about this. When Vital Signs was actually developed, they actually had a, this summary is to die for. They do a one page profile or a four page kind of a deeper profile, but their vocabulary, they didn't have vocabulary. So one day we went up to Park City and confessed our ignorance on balance sheets, right? We just said, guys, we love what you're doing. We just don't know how to interpret it. And they made a to die for vocabulary list. This is the lexicon of a carrier by a glossary. You if you don't know it, this glossary is excellent and it's part of the package. And anytime I forget, oh, how does that said? Or the guy says, well, what does that mean? I never pontificate on that. I never write about that. I pull it directly from the glossary. Well, and, and from a sales perspective, first of all, we're doing this because it's for the benefit of the client. Oh, yeah. But by doing that, it, it sets us aside as a higher level professional in the insurance industry. Mm -hmm. It allows us to bring detail and information, especially in the large case design, that makes us stand out from the mm -hmm. crowd. Because you know that if you get a $100,000 premium, a million dollar premium, everybody and his brother comes out of the woodwork, oh, right? Yeah. And there's going to be attorneys and CPAs involved and they're gonna to have to look at it. And we all have pretty much the same products available to each other, so how do you stand out? Well, it's the design, obviously, which mm. Brokers Alliance does a fabulous job with, but it's also, okay, I'm distinguishing between one A-plus carrier and another A-plus carrier, what is it? Well, back mm. in 2008, I was looking at, for instance, uh, the uh, whether they had a lot of mortgages on the balance sheet or not. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that. That's a legitimate thing. People say, well, Steve, um, how did you know about this? Well, in the old days, we used to track Moody's specifically on real estate. And we knew that a company was in default based on the definition of Moody's back in the day, which was non-payment of interest for 90 days. Mm -hmm. You were technically in default. Right. So now all of a sudden, if you're technically in default by the time we go to the balance sheet and they file this at the end of the year, all of a sudden that's gonna show up on your on your balance sheet and that could be negative. And remember back in the day, there was a lot of real estate holdings. Well, and, and this may have been unfair to some of the companies, but when we're looking at data in uh, 2009 and trying to stay away from companies that had a lot of mortgages on their balance sheet, one, they're illiquid. 
-hmm. Okay, they're not as liquid as bonds are, and that's critical when you have crises like we were in financially. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we had out of date data. So I don't know whether those mortgages are performing or not, but I looked mm -hmm. at one that was A with, with more bonds and more liquidity and higher quality bonds, and I looked at one that said, well, it's a great company, it's got a great, great rating, but they got a good deal of mortgages in mm -hmm. there, and I don't know what this change is gonna do to them, so I'm gonna assume the worst and stay away from them and pick this one. Right. Later on, when the dust settles and things get cleaned up a bit, and you say, okay, well, they're great, they manage their mortgages fabulously, I'm back, put them back on the list, life's good again. but there's more than just the rating. We can make our own decisions on behalf of our clients as to what to do with those types of things. And what I like, and we're gonna get into the portfolio thing all tomorrow, we're gonna to bust this out. Here's a basic thing that I'm looking for, okay? I'm looking at total admitted assets. Now, again, I'm using, uh, you can use any company, I just happen to be using uh, Metropolitan. And uh, I'm looking at their total assets, 360 billion. It's just <laughs> massive. <laughs> it's just massive. And they're one of the three carriers that has over one trillion of life insurance in force. Right. Does that stagger your imagination? Yeah, it did. And, and I knew this stuff and I'm going back through it in preparation for this and that did stagger it. One of the numbers that pops off the page is the percentage of surplus and AVR. Well, tell me how you get there first. Because remember, I got well, the assets. Well, it's your total your assets minus your liabilities. And right. you come up with your, what your net is and that includes your reserves and your surplus. And in this case, it's seven and a half percent of assets. Now, it, you know, when we look at that, we say, okay, and, and some people would convert that to net worth, right? right. Uh -huh. But when you look at asset valuation reserve, listen, I'd love to use the RBC ratings if they would allow us to use it. Can't do it. That's why we're talking about things like this. When we come back from the break, we're going to continue talking about the balance sheet items that you need to know for your business with co-host Ken Davis. And don't forget, you can test drive Vital Signs absolutely free by going out to the site www.vitalsignsalesuite.com, log in slash the biz. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Ebix's smart office solution is used by thousands of professionals worldwide. Focused 100% on serving our industry, our proven technology has made us the number one provider of CRM, practice management, and agency management solutions. Smart office features include anywhere, anytime web-based capability, on-the-go mobile access, industry-specific functionality, integrations with key industry partners, investment data downloads, robust integrations with other eBix products, and a high-powered email marketing capability through Constant Contact. SmartOffice provides a complete wealth management platform that gives you the tools and flexibility to support your practice today in an integrated advisor workstation designed to extend your solution as your practice grows. Make Smart Office the center of your practice. Get Smart Office today. Well, welcome back to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm Steve Savant with Ken Davis. And remember, you can order today's materials at thebiz.tv. And while you're out on our site, click on the Beckham Technician icon for the biz blog <laughs> and for the 30-day free trial offer for the best needs analysis and educational material that address almost every financial planning scenario. And just a heads up before moving forward with anything here in our show, especially all this week, always consult your tax advisor and legal counselor as well as your broker dealer compliance officer before moving forward. We are making a business out of knowing the balance sheet items. I, I, I've almost made a business out of it, it's a career. We're looking at issues of AVR, Asset Valuation Reserve. Now, just before we went to the break, I brought up the idea of risk-based capital. We can't use it in any sales material. It's so funny, they give it to look, for us to look at it, to weigh it out, and we can't use it. So I have to go to places what I can use, and this is public domain information that anybody can get, but we say, why do that when Vital Signs by Evix has already done all this? So we're on the first page of the Life Insurance Financial Analysis. Ken, I'm always looking at the predominant amount of investor postures is going to be in the generic is that they're going to be into bonds. Right. And well, tomorrow we're going to talk about investment grade, non-investment grade. Well, and when I talk to clients and agents about insurance, I say just visualize an insur a life insurance company as this massive bond fund, you know, because that's where they put their assets. And just like we evaluate bond funds for our clients' portfolios, we look at the quality of the bonds, the liquidity, 
the, the uh, ratings, whether they're junk or high quality, all of those things are important. And then, of course, we're going to be talking tomorrow about uh, you know, duration and stuff like mm -hmm. that and what that means to the uh, insurance buyer. Well, I noticed on this on, the, on our first walk through the balance sheet that there's not many people, not much stocks buy, buying on here. That's no, too risky. No, no. So you see that in mortgages. In this specific case, many not not just this carrier, but many carriers have double digit exposure to mortgage. Now that could be good. Well, it could and, be bad. I don't know. Well, and and it's not mortgages generally of homeowners. Right. It's mortgages of businesses Commercial. which have shorter. Uh, periods of time, you know, five or ten year uh, period of time before they have to be refinanced. And generally, you know, frequently they'll require 50% equity in the property. So these aren't the kind of mortgages we're thinking about mm -hmm. where we had the meltdown in right, 2008. Right. These are commercial mortgages with much different terms. And of course, we have a lot of people are invest in real estate. They have mm -hmm. real estate holdings. Mm -hmm. In this case, this is very small for uh, Metropolitan has hardly anything in really in real estate, 1.3. Well, and, and your financial institutions have to be careful about liquidity because there has to be a, a vast amount of liquidity as there is in this and most every insurance company we look at because if suddenly people decide they want to cash out, they have to have assets that are liquid enough to do so. Well, you just served up you know, unintentionally, where I want to go. Okay. I want to go to the <laughs> balance that. sheet. I call it the secret possible problem of the balance sheet. And mm -hmm. what's that? Policy loans. Now, I just want to go back 30 years when I first came in this business. I was told that you could access your policy loan, your cash values via policy loans mm -hmm. anytime you wanted, right? right. That's great. Yep. And people use life insurance for supplemental income. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. So they're taking out their distributions in loans because it's tax free. Right. All right. But if I'm making policy loans and I all of a sudden I see my assets on a carrier balance sheet and I'm 10, 15, and there's one there, it's up there, a major player, 18% wow. of their total assets are policy loans. Well, first of all, that's not going to be liquid because you can't call the bond in, you can't call the loan that's in. That's right. And number two, can if I can't call it in, how can I invest it? So that's a piece of the pie that what am I making on my loan spread? That's all I got, maybe 2%. Well, at the very best, but most of them like to show a zero net cost or a quarter of a point mm -hmm. spread, you know, there, there might be verbiage in the in the right. fine print that says they can go up to 200 basis points. But boy, we as agents, if we see an insurance company suddenly go from a quarter point to 200 basis points, we ain't going to be happy. Well, wait They're going to lose Ken, their sales force. Ken, I hate to bring shock and awe to your day, but there are major whole life carriers whose spreads average. This is not direct recognition loans. I'll get that in a second that are averaging spreads between 150 and 210 basis points right today. And the guys that are playing in the direct recognition loan could be all in at 325 to 350 basis points. And remember, is any client paying the interest on these loans? Well, and, and I think that's why, no, they're not. And that's why we as agents, when we're buying contracts mm -hmm. to provide income, uh, need to be looking at stuff like that. Is it contractual that it is a true zero net cost loan? Is mm -hmm. it a quarter point? Or do they have the ability? And in the past, if they've had the ability, have they put that into gear and actually used it? Mm -hmm. uh, or is it just there to, as a, a final protection in a crisis situation? No doubt about that. And that's why we always say, is it current company practice or is it contractually guaranteed? There are zero net cost loans, wash loans, spread loans, direct recognition loans, and with index, you have now participating loans. I think from a balance sheet standpoint, Steve, the, the message here is how liquid are they and are, do they have assets? You know, like in, in the, the late 80s, early 90s, we were very concerned about junk bonds and what was happening there. So what was the percentage of assets? And we're going to be talking more about mm -hmm. what's at risk. But liquidity and safety, uh, and, and by the way, when these things say stocks, frequently they're preferred stocks. They're not stocks mm -hmm. as we normally right. know them. So in many ways, they act like a bond. Mm -hmm. Think about it. When we're talking about policy loans, we just want to know, hey, you know, based on, now remember, the, the, the company's protected at the death benefit, so it's not like they're sure. out money. Sure. But this is talking about the ability to invest. There's no liquidity. The, the, the rate of return is very small on right. this. So the larger the policy loan, if your policy, what if your policy, would you be upset as a CPA if, as I'm getting out of this show? If my policy loans were greater than my surplus and AVR? Well, of course. Okay. Well, I'm just bringing it to your attention. This may be the new threat from a company due diligence point of view, just bringing it up as part of our balance sheet item talk. Well, that's the show for today. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, or email me at steve at thebiz.tv. 
Well, that's the buzz on the biz for today. You've been in the zone, the business insurance zone. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use.